Hi guys, welcome back to Project Zomboid, Free Nina, starting episode 18. And it's been several months since I published an episode on Free Nina, so I thought it'd be good to take a moment to catch up on where the series is at and what's happened. Over 17 episodes, uh, we carried out a journey where the survivor, Crystal Casey, sought to reunite herself with her spiritual companion, Nina. And Nina had been bit by a zombie and locked herself in a jail cell in Riverside. And it was Crystal's journey to get to Riverside and free Nina. Crystal spawned in a diner, I think here, and was lucky enough to find a car, drove up this way, continued up this way, found the highway here, went west, crossed the fire break, and decided to go north with the hopes to head generally towards Riverside. And we spent our first night, I believe, in a farmhouse about here. And then we hit the road again the next day, came up here, took a left, spent our second night in a house here, and went west along this road, ran out of gas about here, uh, and then walked in, spent another night here, and actually a bunch of nights. We ended up finding a gas station here, I don't know how many nights, three or four nights maybe. Hit the road again, north, um, broke west, went north, west, north, and then at this junction decided to go west, and here we thought we found uh, Riverside, so I cut north and it turned out to be that country club, so we backtracked and kept going west, cut north, and then up through this way, and uh, in here, and then up, and decided to go east because I realized that we probably overshot and had to spend a night in a farmhouse here, whichever night that is, left here, and then headed north and found Riverside and parked at the gas station and met with Nina. And uh, I don't know if Nina was happy to see her, I think probably but it was hard to tell. And anyway, uh, Nina was set loose upon Riverside and Crystal was left to her own devices. Um, and, you know, it's been four months of, of our time, but game time, it's only been about three months or so. But anyway, you know, in that meantime, uh, Crystal has been really busy, you know, clearing out Riverside, did a couple burns, got rid of the zombies uh, as best she could. And, you know, in earnest, set out to just loot the place basically. And most importantly, perhaps for her her sake, upgrade the police station to become more of a home. Nina, I think, got bit around day 18 or something in her run. And, you know, so she had it fairly set up, but really it was just kind of like a glorified storage locker with a bit of safety. So Crystal decided to, you know, get into some farming and really try to open the place up. And and it kept her busy for a couple months. So here's a quick recap of what she did. <laughs> Thank you. 
Year's 1999. They're still done a pretty good job cleaning out Riverside. There's not much left in the way of zombies. It's really a pretty safe place now uh, to live and be. And the police station is, is very comfortable and very self-sufficient now with the farming and, um, yeah, and all the supplies she could need. But on New Year's, you know, thoughts always go to other people. And there's really nobody left except for Nina in Riverside. So sure enough, um, Crystal wanted to go out there and see if she could find her. Uh, the last time we saw Nina, she was, you know, bashing through the bushes sort of east of the police station. Um, and yeah, haven't seen her for a while and, you know, had a few drinks in us. So, you know, wanted to go take a look and see if we could find her. And sure enough, Nina was out there taking in the sights on the shoreline. Really a beautiful place, actually. And was very happy to see us. And we, uh, we took her back to our campfire, you know, invited her in, said hello and, and got to, uh, hear the, you know, in zombie speak, that is the tale of what's been going on for the last month or so since I last saw her. And I think the last time I saw her, she ended up wandering to the police station for some reason. It must've been that she heard our, our car go by or something, but anyway, uh, yeah, it had been about a month and uh, it was good to see her again, you know, but in the end, uh, we've decided that we're better off uh, living in separate accommodations. So I took her back to where she likes to hang out and uh, and faded into the bushes. Hey guys, back we are home sweet home, uh, the lovely police station. It is now a really deluxe home for Crystal. Um, where we left off, we had, you know, we set up a farm here. So this is now all enclosed. We've still got our, our uh, compost bins. We've got some extra water here, but yeah, fully enclosed uh, farm. And I put in a shed actually, which is really kind of handy. That stores kind of like just some of our, our heavy duty equipment and paint and stuff. And we've actually got a rain barrel connected here to a, um, a sink, so for easy easy watering. We can also water off these too, so plenty of water for crops if we do do another major plantation. Um, but you know what I've found so far is that uh, there's just plenty of food, so we don't really have too many concerns. I did set up these um, little lookouts here that allow us to sort of go up and scout the uh, surrounding area, and. Yeah, it's been quiet though. You know, we've pretty much killed everything. So, you know, Nina comes back now and then, but yeah, uh, we can go say hello, but, um, but yeah. So other than that, um, what have we done? Basically pulled up some of the best cars that we have. So they're available for us to use and repaired up where necessary. We've got, you know, a stash of car parts here. This is sort of my service area. We've got tires, um, you know, odds and ends for cars. And with an emphasis on heavy duty, because, you know, heavy duty, I think, are probably my favorite class of cars. And, and yeah, otherwise, um, we did put on a new staircase uh, on the side of the building in order to provide some rain barrels up top to connect to uh, sinks inside. So we have clean uh, water that gets stored when it rains. And actually, one thing I found is that through the winter, it doesn't rain that much and snow doesn't seem to fill these. So we actually have had a slight water crunch. I had to stop making stews and switch over to, um, you know, stir fries and roasts. So anyway, let's um, let's go back inside and I'll show you the uh, the pad. So um, same entry. Now you've probably seen, yeah, from the um, the renovation. Uh, we basically divided up the main uh, main area of the police station, the main office area, I guess, into a kitchen slash dining room area um, with a sink. You know, microwave oven. Originally, I had one of those major industrial ovens, but I found out that, you know, storage space for freezing and, and keeping stuff cool is actually more important. So this is kind of our action fridge. And we've got a little bit of frozen stuff in there. Um, you know, all kinds of food stored up here. Wine, we've got a little bit of bourbon, um, you know, the usual kitchen stuff. These are our, our main uh, food supplies. So I've got, you know, a major stash, 1300 cigarettes, some bourbon, bunch of chips, yeah, I mean, any one of these um, cabinets you could live off. We've got, uh, you know, mostly condiments, but also some heavy stuff like rice. I still haven't used rice at all. 
and yeah all kinds of canned goods that would last for quite a while if we ran out of food but we've had no trouble getting uh, food to grow indoors I set up um, as you saw a plantation in here and yeah we've got a little sink here to to water it from just for convenience sake uh, yeah and I found that basically you know with the um, the grow that I did once here it's been pretty good for most of the winter now it's coming up to the beginning of February so um, you know if we hung around here much longer we would probably need to do another grow this is my my storage out here I've got you know carrots are mainly for the traps so I've been doing a lot of trapping um, yeah carrots and broccoli we've got a little bit of rabbit meats stored away a ton of radishes which turned out to be kind of useless but uh, potatoes are really good bunch of tomatoes cabbages fish fillets you know and I, I don't know why I've I did strawberries, but we did. We've got a barbecue that I don't use. And yeah, the original generator was here. Um, and I, this is sort of our backup now. Uh, let's just see. Generator info. Yeah, it's all fueled up and ready to go. It's connected. But I decided to do... Um, to t kind of take over Nina's yard and set up um, this to be the sort of generator yard slash back end, back door. And yeah, we've got this generator, which... I believe it powers the lights in the, uh, the parking lot as well. So the, the reason I set it up here is that it powers the front lights in the parking lot. And these lights I have to set up with batteries, unfortunately. They don't they don't get powered by wiring. There might be a way to set that up, but I haven't looked into it. Um, and then, yeah, guys, we've got storage. I moved my gun locker to here. So we've got you know pretty good storage of, of um, guns. Now, we are a little low on ammo. I have burned through a bunch of ammo because we managed to level up our aiming to four and our reloading to four so that's a really good place to be for um guns and ammo but yeah we've got you know all kinds of tools um you know galore basically everything we've accumulated over all this time and still no katana though so that's something that's on the horizon maybe we've got all our books you know this is our our library we do have you know some skills that i have to find a couple books for but nothing that's pressing and you know a little bit of radio to keep us company with the um the um automated weather service channel which does it does perk you up a little bit it actually feels like somebody's out there even if it's automated it it helps to have something talking to you and just to review the uh the skill situation over the past three or four months um yeah long blunt you know we've taken a long way up because we've been pretty consistently using crowbar and maintenance has come right up, so maintenance is great. We maxed out carpentry. Cooking's almost there, though. We're missing that last book, Master Cooking. Farming got maxed out. And electrical is fine. Metalworking, we maxed out doing all the fences and whatnot. And mechanics, we took up to the point where we can repair the engine properly, I think, and do some of the other advanced repairs. Um, yeah, aiming and reloading, as I said, we're at four, four and four. And yeah, fishing and trapping. Trapping really got pushed up. I kind of stopped fishing, but... Um, you know, might get back to it, but yeah. And uh, the other thing we tried to do was fitness and strength. So I, I went on a program of uh, fitness where I was doing burpees, which I read uh, based on the description here, do both um, improve strength and fitness. So we did a regime of every morning doing 30 minutes of burpees, which eventually we took down to 20 minutes because it didn't seem to affect this regularity. But as you can see, we maxed our regularity I don't really think that's been affecting our, noticeably affecting our, our gain. Like these these fitness and strength levels have not increased, I don't think, the entire run, despite me running everywhere, etc. So I, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. I think that's just, they're pretty static. And it makes me think that when you're building a character, you know, having traits that set these high is potentially really important. So, but we are still on the, um, the early build. Um, so, there's that to think about. We're on 41.50, and on the, I know that some big changes have come in with 41.55 and 41.56. So, uh, yeah, that might be um, no longer the case. But this run is forever locked into 41.50 because it can't. We can't load the save save file with uh, with the new game. So it is what it is. I, I, I do like this this version though, so I'm very happy to proceed with it. And and yeah. Oh yeah, we redid the bathroom a little bit. Um, you know, plumbed it. Here we've got kind of general storage for equipment, you know, day-to-day -day kind of equipment, fishing rods, axes, needle and thread, cleaning supplies. Oh yeah, so this is also our, our monster um, 
you know, medical storage there. And the bedroom we redid, as you saw, so we've got, you know, more comfortable bedroom space. At first, I thought we would need um, the stove to stay warm during the winter, but it turns out with enough clothing on, we can sleep in here just fine. So we don't need to burn it. But initially, I ran it for a bit before I realized that you could really just load up on clothing and be and be fine. Um, and yeah, did a little, put a little bit of art up and we've got a bath too, it's plumbed. So that's really nice. Another water storage as well, as it turns out. And, and yeah, our main clothing storage, I actually kind of ran out. We may want to increase the clothing storage a little bit, but anyway, guys, uh, I left, yeah, I left all these walls intact because these are all original walls. So they're not, I don't think the zombies can bash through them. So it just comes down to this one door, which is again, reinforced. So this is still a really strong, um, a really strong enclave basically they have to get through multiple layers to get to us to come through the back they have to go through multiple doors i don't think they're coming through there they come through this way they got to go through the exterior fence, front door this door and this door so i guess the easiest way would be to come through the back door i could put another door in to make it three doors this way too but um if i close that fence it's a fair bit for them to try to get in in the you know in the impossible situation that some giant horde came and really i think that would be one of the most interesting things to add to the game at this point would be major roving armies of zombies like you know big migratory hordes um would be so so cool so anyway guys as you can see like it's it's super cozy living here it's super peaceful you know we go out into town when we need to um and you know go to check the traps do a little fishing check on nina but it's a super peaceful life in riverside it's it's indeed unbelievably nice and um, one could just stay here forever. But um, one thing that is kind of burning me a little bit is that um, we don't have that much ammo. And uh, yeah, like it is good to have ammo. And I have been working up her gun skill a fair bit. So we're up to level four, as I said. And uh, and yeah, we, we could easily use some more ammo. Like for example, the 38 ammunition, I don't have very much of it. So, and nine millimeter, you know, there's, we're just kind of low. Um, so basically, um, I think what we should do, guys, is it's time for us to leave the safety of Riverside and um, go on a road trip. And I think what we're going to do is head for West Point, which as of yet, this run has been completely untouched. So and I don't remember what the settings are for the run anymore. It's been so long, but uh, it's been, you know, I think it was at least I think it was two times population, but um, Anyway, who knows? It's going to be dense. There's going to be an insane number of zombies. And uh, yeah, the, the, the goal will be to go to West Point and to raid the, um, the gun store there to replenish our, our supplies. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So um, next episode, we're going to set out for West Point. I've got um, a choice of vehicles and I thought about it. And I think we're probably going to take this lovely Kentucky Ranger vehicle. Um, it's, it's in great shape. And, uh, yeah, I've done a good job repairing it at least. And it has a good combination of horsepower and it's not also a little, it's fairly quiet for a, for a large vehicle and it's got really good storage space. So we're basically going to load up and, and go on a mission guys. And honestly, it's been a long time since I've been out in real zombie territory. So I'm a bit nervous about it. It is still, you know, winter time. So it's going to be February soon. And it's cold, but not that cold. And the thing is, with all of our kit on, this is in our combat clothing. With all our combat clothing on, we're actually really warm. So it, it probably makes sense to go do some zombie smashing in the winter still. If it were summertime, uh, I think, you know, it might actually become a bit problematic heat-wise and sweat-wise and stuff. So anyway, guys, um, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sort of like bridge episode bringing us from the distant past into the now. And yeah, we're going to carry on with a very different vibe now from here on in. So thanks so much for watching, guys. It's been a huge pleasure, and I'll catch you next time.